Okay, let's go ahead. <clears throat> I've got a full thing of tea. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Let's do a mic check. Can anybody hear me? Oh, I got a mute. Hi, everybody. Let's do it. Ooh, hate it when I get that feedback. Hi, GB. Can anybody hear me? Please type yes. Yep. Thank you, holy moly. Appreciate it. Okay, guys. We'll wait till a few people get here. Um. I'm really excited to tell you guys that we've hit over 3,000 subscribers. Hi, everybody. Here everybody comes. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys kind of get settled in your seats. Um, we have some fantastic news today. Hey, Tony. Hi, Linda. Hi, Jimmy. Missy. GB. Whitney. Holy moly. Cheryl. Larry. Good to see everybody. Thanks for doing the mic check with me. Now, while we're waiting on everybody, let's go ahead and do a visual. So um, I'm going to go over here. I'll grab uh, the back end of the library. We'll pick a picture and see if everybody can see it. And as always, my computer's terribly slow. We'll go into my... Uh, my junk pile here and just kind of mess around in there a few minutes. We'll find something that we can look at. All right, we're going to pull up this uh, picture of Zellner. Oh, this might actually be a PowerPoint I opened. Oh, well. There you go. So on the screen right now, I have report of pictures of body found. That was the one uh, that we hit, I think. What we hit, like 75,000 views on that one or so? It was just amazing. Um, okay. So did it, hi, everybody. Um, does everybody see the picture of the report of pictures of body found? It's going to switch in just a minute because I'm, I'm back on the screen watching the chat. Ah, good clapping. Hear us loud and clear, and yep, we can see. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to bring everybody together. It's been a little while because um, the RD researchers are working on a ginormous, huge project, and we're just delighted to share that. Um, and that'll be coming out in about a week. And um, let me take a drink real quick. So what it is, is it's going to be a remaking a murderer. So it's going to be a mini ma'am one, two, and three, but it's going to be the updated version. So it will have a lot of the new findings of Zellner, as well as some of the new eyewitnesses added, um, what we've learned about the different forms of evidence and what really happened versus what the, the jury saw. And so we're going to try to make sure that we are reconstructing the information that we've all been working on. Everyone, all the armchair sleuths around the world, have come to the conclusion that the jury was presented with a completely offset version of uh, the reality. And so uh, I'm excited too, Whitney. Good to see you. Hey, Bron. <laughs> I see you. Uh, AKA Red Crossbows there, Tracy, Jimmy. Okay, it looks like we're doing pretty good. We're filling up nice and full here. So um, I have the great announcement. First of all, that we are getting this remaking a murderer cut. Um, we're about 70% done with the actual um, movie itself. And I'll tell you, it walks you through a whole new scenario versus what the, the jury and the public saw. Um, we did. We had a lot of fake news at the time. We had uh, the sheriff from Calumet County, Sheriff, um, sheriff Jerry Pagel, went on in front of everybody and, and told them that the FBI absolutely confirmed that the bones were Teresa Hallbox. And we know from listening to Zellner that that is not even close to the truth. Um, they stated that, that Teresa, the FBI stated that Teresa could not be ruled out and that meant others could not be ruled out as well. And we are wanting those bones, and they have been given away. And so we're we're impatiently waiting um, 
on the state to answer. And as Zellner put in her tweet, it's a deafening silence from the state. They don't have a, they don't have a lot of options, you know. They can't fake it till they make it um, because unfortunately they have come clean with the fact that they no longer have these bones. So it's going to be very interesting how this po plays out. I'm excited. Um, so what we're doing, um, we've got a few more people, so I'll say it again. I wanted to bring this all together in a celebration. We've hit over 3,000 subscribers um, in the short time that we've been offline working on the huge project. It'll be a three-part series called Remaking a Murderer. And in that, it will have the corrections as well as um, the updates that Zellner has given us. And all of you, hey, hey, LL Grace. Um, all of you armchair sleuths have worked, whether you've spread the news or you've made comments or you've found some stuff out yourself. That's what we all are. Um, some of us like to call ourselves researchers. Others are armchair sleuths. It's all the same. And as YouTuber, um, I want to thank the other YouTubers for always working to uh, perpetuate a very positive attitude environment in backing each other because truthers need to be all on the same page. I don't believe that it would do anybody any good to um, make any negative comments about anybody because if we're bringing awareness to the case, that's our job. Um, and we love that. And so, you know, if there are those that have a few negative comments out there, the way I look at it is it's water off a duck's back, to be honest, um, because we're here to focus on the case. So while others have been doing interviews that maybe target other YouTubers, we're going to stay away from that. And we have been working to give you something new in the library. So I'm so excited um, to share this with you guys. I want to throw out a special shout out. Um, for the Avery Road crew as um, one of their very specific members was kind enough to share with the library and all of you um, a great collection of archived newspaper clippings. And then also the RD researchers jumped in and we have added to that and we have also subscribed to a new library um, in newspapers, so we contacted a lot of the, the newspaper companies, and um, we are able to pay a little bit, and in that, we get a hold of all their archive newspapers for the local area. So this is going to be brilliant. Um, the newspapers, you've got to remember, there is some false news that was being propagated at the time, like I referred to earlier, which was that, like, for instance, um, I'm sorry, Jerry Pagel of Calumet County, the sheriff, did go on public news and broadcast that the FBI had confirmed um, that Teresa Hobach's bones were, a or Teresa Hobach was a match to the bones, but that was not true. That was false news. And so we do have to go into these with a little bit of that knowledge that they are reporting on what they've been, what they were being informed. However, these actual newspaper clippings from as early as the 3rd of November in 2005, um, even before that, we have some of the newspaper clippings of when Stephen was actually in his civil suit for his 36 millions. Um, so, uh, thank you, Ronald Cass. Uh, thank you, Ronald Cass. Thank you. Um, but... Yeah, what I wanted to talk about tonight was how can we how can we as YouTubers continue to stay focused on the right information? And the library is there for credentials. It, it, it backs up a sense of credibility because what we're now doing is we're taking constructive criticism. That's how we're going to take it. Um, of others, um, that when we release a video, within the video itself, because we make our videos on a PowerPoint program, will allow us to put a PowerPoint PDF together that will have clickable links that is actually used in making the video. So as we release a future video, you'll be able to go to the library. The link will be provided within the video clip on YouTube. You'll click it. It'll take you to a PDF of the video, a screen by screen shot, and the links that are important that are relative to the case 
um, will be clickable and they'll take you right into the library itself where the file sits. You'll be able to come back and continue on your stroll. So we're celebrating here. We're up to 42. I appreciate all of you coming in. We are celebrating that we've hit over 3,000 subscribers. Um, that's our big news. We're very excited that the public awareness is spreading so rapidly. Uh, we also want to announce that the library has an addition. So without further to do, I think we should get right on that. Hi, Misunderstood. <laughs> Good to see you guys. A lot of great familiar names. We have some brilliant, brilliant supporters. Very cool. All right, guys. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. Let's close out some of these other windows because that way we don't bog ourselves down. And if you want to follow along, uh, thank you, Tom, very much. If you'd like to follow along, you can see there um, several of the mods are listing out um, clickable links, one of them being to the RD Stephen Avery Files Library. So if you don't want to click it, we'll type it here. You're just going to type rubber ducky Stephen Avery Files dot com. And we'll let that load up a minute. So this is our library for those of you that haven't had a chance to go there. I will tell you it's a lot of fun. We're adding more and more interactive uh, material. Um, currently for the last, oh, probably three weeks and we'll still be doing it for another week. We are remaking a murder video. And this is a three-part series that incorporates a lot of the new Zellner information, um, a lot of armchair sleuth information that they've researched. Um, and it will have clickable links that lead them to the library for documentation purposes. So we're very excited about that. So I am here, I am on the homepage. We're just gonna flip back and make sure that everybody can see that. Just said that soon all videos will be put in the library, yeah. Now, I don't know if we'll do the archived videos, the ones we've done in the past, but as we go forward, um, because we always wanna be moving forward, um, as we go forward, we will take that um, criticism very kindly. We do appreciate that. It does tell us how to better our public awareness and how to enable everybody to do their own research. So that's fantastic. Hi, Missy Hammer. Good to see you. All right. Okay, guys, um, I did see that. So we're going to go ahead and go into this. And um, so in celebration of over 3,000 subscribers, you're going to go to the More button. And you're going to slide down here. There's a couple you can see we're working on copy of the multimedia room. Um, just some things we're working on. We've got maps. We've got the evidence rooms with the evidence lockers. We have who's who. We have the county law enforcement, circuit court judges, defense attorneys, state versus Avery Dassey. And then we have the RD Avery document library here where you can actually go look at documents. We have case update videos. Um, and then we have document library here as well because it, it's two different parts. And the RD case videos, a forum, which we are increasing our forums. Um, We'll click this for a minute. This is just a, a rough format for you guys. It's not completely functioning yet, but it'll give you an idea of what we're working on for the forum before we jump into the newspapers. So we'll let that load a minute. And you can see that this is going to be a forum here. We've got Ducks in a Row Forum, it's called. And on this area here, we're going to have a um molecular biologist that um, is going to be helping us do a forum on DNA evidence issues and he has also um, written quite a few papers as well and he will be showing his credentials so that he is qualified to answer your DNA questions. And then we're also working on a bones and barrel. Um, this will be more or less armchair sleuths where you'll be able to question and answer, go back and forth, have discussions on, um, and anybody's welcome to do the research and add in there. To be able to do this, I believe you do have to log in now as a member. You can be a guest, but I don't think you can participate in the forum as a guest. I think it requires us to um, actually become a member there. So let's go and let's find the document library because of the newspapers. Oh, 
All right, very good. So you can see there's a list of little videos you can watch if you'd like. And then um, the RD document, the RD Avery document library. So right here is our new edition. And this is in celebration of our 3,000 tweets. And we, we have a little, we have to do a little brush with fame share because uh, that always is inspiring to know that big ears are listening. And um, so Jer Jerry Buting did um, follow us on Twitter and um, then forward some information to Zellner from our library. And we did save that tweet because we were like, what? That's amazing. Um, very, very, very excited. So this is this is the archived newspaper clips that you would actually click. We'll come back to that. And you can see we have a 1995 Avery case, Brendan Dassey case. There's information here about Car Carmen Botwell, um, Casio reports and documents, Deb Sakawati, defense attorneys, evidence logs, jury trial documents, law enforcement or law office uh, officials, Manitowoc County docs, miscellaneous court docs, motions and court filings, post-conviction, reports notes, Ricky Hotch letter, State of Wisconsin Crime Lab, trial exhibits, and witness affidavits. Um, something that is going to be happening once the video Remaking a Murderer comes out is we are going to be flipping back and working on the library and we're adding the multimedia room, the forum, as well as a who's who player section that's more on the lines of those that were not officials in the case. So that would be witnesses, suspects such as Denny suspects, um, family members of both those that are suspect, um, defense, and prosecution. So it'll be more interesting um, for those that are really trying to connect some of the details together on where people were and what they were doing at what time during um, that 15 day stretch from the 31st till the 14th of November. So 31st of October. So, okay, I'm gonna switch back real quick before we hit the link, just to see if there are any questions before we get into the library. We're doing good, everybody. Um, oh, chat's rolling pretty good. Yeah, you can follow along. I see Lilypad's offering the actual um, link for you there, as well as Bron Foth. Um, holy moly, hi, how you doing? Yeah, the library is super cool for all of us. I actually use the library to build our videos. So that's fantastic. And as I said before, those of you that are just joining, um, from going forward, what we're going to be doing is our videos are in a... Um, PowerPoint format when we create them and we have the ability to save that in a PDF that has clickable links within so that if I do say something on there, I'm reading a document, you can actually, we'll be able to go into the description of the video on YouTube. There'll be the link. You'll click it. It'll take you right to the PDF in the library and you'll be able to screen by screen actually take your time read it and click the link to take you to the document yourself and this enables our public awareness to be very thoroughly backed up and credible because we don't want that where people aren't sure where to find the documents and we've tried to help by building the library but i think a little bit more direction as to how to use the library will help us okay i see everybody's here and accounted for that um wants to do this so let's click this so this is just going to be a little reminiscing you guys i clicked the library link that is for the archived newspapers and we'll give that just a minute um while that's loading i'm going to pause for a minute and grab a drink before we start reading some of these interesting newspaper clippings Okay, I'm back. Um, I see Bumblebee's offering as well the Discord channel, and Braun was too. 
and Silkbun, um, or I guess he's Tony. Um, so you guys, there are links available there in the chat for you as well. Oh dear, I tried opening a new screen and heard rubber duck again echo. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure that's a good thing. Um, all right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump in. So what we've got here, we'll just do a little scrolling and kind of pick and choose. We'll cherry pick from the list here. Um, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five across the top. So approximately five, six documents. And some of these are attributed to a uh, member of the Avery Road crew. She supplied the library with these, donated them, and we're very grateful. And then others are brought in by the RD researchers as well. And then also in our links, that is anonymous, um, anonymous links, I should say, from the RD library. Um, so you can see there's, there's substantially quite a few of these. Um, and they do tell the story. Um, also, in case you did miss, I'll repeat myself. Um, we have paid, the, the RD duckies have paid for um, several newspaper, local newspapers that are now allowing us to go into their archive collection and basically download um, that in a way that you can, ex you can um, expand it and it's still very readable, crystal clear. So we're excited about that. So let's go ahead and take a couple of these. Um, we can see the dates down here. Um, let's see. This one says 8 11 06, so that it goes 8 10 06. Let's sort this a little bit. See if we can, instead of date taken, we can put it by name. Might put these in a little bit. Yeah, you can hear the train. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now what it doesn't do is it doesn't sort by year. So you can see here, this is February 06. This is February 07. It kind of slides it in because it's going by the, the month. So we'll just have to, like I said, we'll cherry pick. But let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit. Judge clarifies bond ruling. So we're going to open this up. We'll give it a minute. So you can see the judge clarifies bond ruling. Willis will only consider property as bond for suspected killer. Um, you know, that's that brings a question. We've all talked about land grab. You know, we'll only consider property. Um, that's the county saying that they want that property put up on bond. That's kind of interesting. It says Manitowoc County. I'm reading right down here below the picture. And you guys can follow along on this. It's actually at rubberduckystephenaveryfiles.com. Um, and then you're going to go to the RD uh, document library. And when you get there, you're going to see right there the newspaper clippings archive. Give it a click, and you're in like Flynn. All right, so Manitowoc County Circuit Court Judge Patrick Willis presides over a court hearing for Steve Avery on January 17th in Manitowoc, Willis has clarified a bond request ruling he made at the hearing. So let's go ahead and expand that a bit. Here we go. It's a little bit blurry. It should come along. Uh, Manitowoc, regardless of its value property, owned by Stephen A. Avery's family, won't earn the homicide defendant and automatic release on bond. According to a letter from a Manitowoc County Circuit Court judge written to clarify his January 17th ruling on a bond request, Judge Patrick Willis in, in a letter to Calumet County District Attorney Ken Kratz and public defenders Eric Loy and Craig Johnson said he would only consider accepting a property bond in lieu of $500,000 cash bail set for Avery. Why on earth would they not want cash? That is strange to me. And I'm not real heavy into this part of, of how the bond works. But in life in general, cash is always preferred in, in normal means. But not in this case. They're stating that they need that property to be um, the bond. He would only consider accepting a property bond in lieu of $500,000 cash bail set for Avery. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder about 
Is it possible that the land grab was something that was going on? Now, this document here it says key players in the trial of Avery Dassey. Let's click that. This is a February 4th, 2007 document. You can see this newspaper here at the top. Let's give it a little expansion there and be able to read that. So in this, we all obviously have Teresa Habach. Um, we have the Judge Patrick Willis. Um, it does talk about Jerome Fox, but it does not show a picture for him. Um, and then we have Avery, Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey, Ken Kratz, Jerry Pagel, Jerome Buting, and Dean Strain. So this itself would be a very interesting read, I would think, too. This one here. Oh, you guys, I got to share this story with you. So I'm from Wisconsin, and uh, I'm from central Wisconsin. While I was having dinner on our 6 o'clock news back in 2005 when Teresa, um, when their vehicle was found, when the RAV was found, Kratz goes on and tells us that we should turn minors and young children away from the screen of our local television set on channel 13 news and so we couldn't see our tv because we eat in the kitchen at the table so i thought well i don't need to avert their eyes because we're at the table we can only hear unfortunately kratz began to tell us that horrific murder scene in the most gruesome detail um you can imagine and this was this was a numbing effect to be able to hear something like that come over the local news. Usually um, our news was relative to Mr. Food doing the cooking show. Um, they would mention someone um, being killed in a car accident, name not being released, but there was no graphic content really in the news at time up until King Kratz, um, kind of for lack of better words, he, he busted that cherry wide open by just coming out and saying, how gruesome the murder was and he he seemed to to tell us a story that just spun into this graphic oh i mean it's still in my head and i don't think i can ever get that out of my head and it it pre-tainted the jury they already were were disgusted by this there wasn't anybody that hadn't heard it or seen it in the area okay it says teen to be charged in the hallbach homicide kratz pagel Relative of Stephen Avery implicates himself, Avery, during interviews with investigators. So, um, boy, to make initial court appearance Friday, mother says officials made her son confess. That would be Barb Tadich. At the time, it would have been Barb Yonda, I believe. The investigation has, in my opinion, led to a conclusion or def a definitive set of answers as to what occurred on the 31st of October of 2005. Calumet County District Attorney King Kratz. Um, Mishikot, a 16-year-old relative of Stephen Avery, has admitted his and Avery's involvement in the death last fall of Teresa Halbach and will be charged as an adult today with first-degree intentional homicide. I question, how can they charge somebody with limited mental capability as an adult in the first place? Um, somebody that on their second interview, they couldn't use any of the information because he wasn't even read his Miranda rights, according to his own lawyer, Lynn Kaczynski. Um, you know, Brendan did not get treated fairly in the first place, but for them to decide to treat him as an adult with his limited cap uh, capability I just, I'm just, oh, breaks my heart, breaks my heart. Um, the mother of the juvenile confirmed to the Herald Times reporter, he has been questioned, arrested, and taken away to juvenile facility in Sheboygan. And um, it says, I let me move this up here. Um, I think they pumped him and made him say it, the woman said after Pagel's news conference. But they, But that's my son that they're talking about. And it hurts inside. The HTR is withholding the name because the juvenile's name was not released. It's hard to read this, you guys. It's grainy. And he had not been charged. The boy is scheduled to make his first appearance in Manitowoc County. 
Circuit Court on Friday. Calumet County District Attorney King Kratz, speaking at the same news conference, said the suspect will proceed directly to adult court. This will be an adult criminal prosecution. The boy faces life in prison if convicted of first-degree intentional homicide. The investigation Wednesday, in my opinion, at least, led to the conclusion or the definitive set of answers as to what occurred on the 31st of October 2005, Kratz said. Okay. Um, you know, Kratz has lied to the jury and misled the jury, and he's not above the law. I would love to recommend that whoever the powers are that be, such as Selner or whoever, when this case is resolved with getting the boys home, the guys home, can somebody please put him up on the stand and let's get him to realize how much wrong he has done. He has stole lives by telling lies to this jury, and he should be held accountable for his wrongdoing. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I got to say. I feel like he should have a trial, a fair trial, um, unlike what was presented for Stephen or Brendan. It was not a fair trial in any way. The information provided to the jury was a lot of... Um, Pictures, not evidence, a lot of stretched lies, a lot of hand signals to witnesses, um, witnesses that in the pretrial state something completely different than they do in the trial. So how can you trust this witness? If in the pretrial, Pam's opening the car door with her shirt and um, can't get it open, but she uses her shirt, describes a two-door car in the pretrial, and then in the real trial, she now is opening a, trying to open a four-door car with a Kleenex. In one version, Nicole is the one taking pictures and calling in the van and doing this stuff. Um, on her phone, she's taking pictures. And in the next version, we have Pam stating that she's taking pictures with a camera that Scott Blodorn, the roommate, gave her. So... <sighs> This is not a fair trial. There's no way about it. And then you also have continually, when you read the reports, the stories of the witnesses, um, and even now what I would consider uh, personally, in my humble opinion, suspects. You have, um, as Zellner said, Bobby is a suspect, Bobby Dassey, and his story changes and changes and changes. And then you have the phone call where she's saying, yeah, he saw her drive away. Yeah, she left the property. And Stephen's saying, well, that's not what was said. You know, this these things need to be rehashed. And if we if these bones don't get turned back around, um, which how can they? They've been commingled. They're destroyed, you guys. Even if we get the bones back, even if that comes through, they've contaminated the bones. We don't know which is which. We don't know which way is up. So Let's go back into this real quick. I didn't mean to click out, you guys. Give it just a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry about my little soapboxes, but it really it really gets to me about the fairness of the trial. That's why I say you need to dig into these newspaper clippings. Each one of them is a time capsule of information, and, and they just get your mind going. They bring you into the case on a level that is so more, so much more in depth. Um, again, I'm I'm going to sort this real quick, and then we'll save it. We'll save the sorting order so that you guys can see it in order. Okay, so let's continue on. Um, this is a 2006. This is in March, 2006. So we just heard that uh, Brendan Dassey is arrested at that last one and immediately after Brendan which let's go back and check that dates forgive me on the train again so if you look here we have 3206 that's what we just read right so March 2nd 2006 teen to be charged for Halbach homicide so that's March 2nd 2006 I just want you to make the connection here this also happens on the exact same day that Brendan is going, that this newspaper clipping came out. We now have 3206, and we have Halbach's higher attorney for civil suit. So at this point, um, the Halbachs decide to sue 
not only Stephen, but also Brendan. And if you read this, um, I'm not sure if it's this article or the next, but the judge recuses themselves. Um, that's, I believe it's Judge Willis um, recuses himself from it because it would have taken all money, the only the 400000 Let me put it this way. When Stephen Avery had his first civil suit, he did not win the $36 million, but he was awarded four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars now four hundred thousand came from the civil suit as well as another um twenty five thousand came from a previous payout from the state of wisconsin he ended up having to give a hundred and sixty thousand to the civil suit lawyers for doing the job and getting the four hundred thousand that left him approximately two hundred and sixty thousand plus the twenty five thousand he had originally got with that twenty five thousand he had bought a truck and I believe he was um, in the process of buying a trailer or something like that, that he was going to put it a different location. So now he's sitting on 160000 he gave them. He's got 240 left. Where's the 240 going? It's got to go to his new lawyers because he's being charged with suspect of a homicide suit. So the new lawyers are going to get the money. So Stephen gets wind of this lawsuit that the Hallbox are, are wanting all of that to leave him with no money to get a lawyer. And the complication is he did not qualify for a public defender because he had the 400000 So it left him with this back against the wall. He would not have had a public defender because he didn't. he wasn't eligible. And he wouldn't have had his 400000 They would have taken it. He would have had no way to hire a lawyer. He would have literally faced this case without representation, which is, is unprecedented. I've never heard of that. So I'm not sure what would have happened. So the judge decided to recuse himself and said, I won't be a part of this, Judge Willis. But do you know who took the case? Anybody know? I'm going to go on to the chat a minute. I want to see if anybody can answer this. Who took over the case, you guys, on um, the civil suit for the Hallbox versus Dassey and Avery. Selner actually hit upon this last time, and she's asking this person currently to recuse herself again in the case. And that is, do we know? Okay, I'm going to try to catch up with chat, you guys. It's flying by. Do we know if the trial was 100% recorded visually? Um, actually, Braun, I'm not sure. I do know that there were um, third party above and beyond ma'am there were third party individuals as well as news i'm not sure if they were allowed in the courtroom or not um i'm not asking if we the public can access it okay yeah i'm not 100 percent sure on that that would be a great rd research team question and ron since you ask it i'm going to ask you to see if you can follow up and the next time we do a live or a video maybe we can answer that for everybody Okay, so yeah, um, for those of you that uh, were wondering the questions, answer yes, Bron, you got it. Yes, aka Red Crossbow got it. Calf Calf got it. You guys are right. So, um, Judge Sucka, um I can't even say the name Sekowitz. I try to say it decent, um, but yeah, she took the case up. So Judge Willis recused because he's like, I'm not touching this. We're not going to leave this guy without a way to defend himself in a trial of this magnitude. This is this. He even knew at that time that this wasn't a fly by night trial. We're facing a man that had national news in his face about a lawsuit against Manitowoc County, specifically against the sheriff at the time of the 1985 incident, which was um, Kukuric, and as well as the DA, which was Vogel. And these two gentlemen were supposed to be questioned in the civil suit in a deposition. They were up next. There was maybe a week or so before they were going to have to answer why Stephen had been kept in prison when it had been Vogel himself had actually just two months or three months prior to the Penny Bernstein sexual assault um, alleged rape, he had prosecuted Gregory Allen 
for sexual um, DV, you know, behavior that was inappropriate. He had already processed him. He was well aware of Gregory Allen. And so he can't say he had never heard of the guy. And then we have the 1999 where we've got this note in the file saying Gregory Allen's name in Stephen Avery's file. And the Innocence Project finds this note and they realize that when Brown County officer had called over, they had not just said, hey, there was some other person that said that somebody was doing time for a crime they committed in Manitowoc County. No, they had named Gregory Allen. So they had a name to go on. They could have checked up. They could have followed up. But nothing was done. In fact, if I recall, um, this is off the top of my head, but I recall um, that it was stated that Colburn was told by, I believe, Peterson that they had the right man in custody behind bars. So we're back to the Hallbach uh, um, situation where it would have left absolutely no one to defend him. So let's just see what this says. It's the worst roller coaster I've ever been on. I find it hard to be surprised about whatever I hear now about the case, Mike Hobach, brother of the homicide victim, Teresa Hobach. So they were they were wanting to leave him defenseless. Here, let's read this a little bit. I'm starting way over here on this third column. And just at the top of the paragraph, Avery will get about 240000 from the Manitowoc County civil suit, which claimed county officials were negligent and targeted him for arrest and conviction in the 1985 sexual assault. He served 18 years in prison on that charge before being cleared by DNA evidence and released in 2003. Berenstein, which that is completely spelt wrong, said the Hobbock family does not plan to wait. Okay, maybe that's a different Berenstein. Must be, oh, it doesn't even have an R in it. So it's, I can't even say the name. I'm not even going to try. I will slaughter the name. I'm terrible with that. Said that Hobbock family does not plan to wait for Avery's criminal proceedings to end before asking a judge to move ahead with its civil suit. Avery has 45 days to respond to the civil complaint. So I will offer this to you guys. This is the Associated Press and the Green Bay Press Gazette contributed to this article. And uh, so, yeah, these are all sitting here for you guys to enjoy. Let's continue on our little stroll real quick here. Um, let's see. We'll just crack this one open. This is the ninth. So we're talking seven days, a week later after Hallbox have started. Kratz blundered in releasing details. Ooh, this is a dear editor. Let's see. Um, this was written by Conrad Bays of Two Rivers. So this is a dear editor letter. Letter, um, and it says, "I have read and reread your story about the press conference had held by Calumet County District Attorney King Kratz on March second concerning the development in the Steve Avery case. The motives for the press conference are unclear, but I do wonder about the effect." it will have on the trial of Avery. The graphic nature, oh man, I'm going to pause there, you guys. Let's just stop right there. Exactly. This person is now going to tell you what I told you if you were tuned in at the beginning of this. This is where I said, we're having dinner in central Wisconsin and uh, Kras comes on the news, tells us to avert our children's eyes and then proceeds to use his voice while we're eating dinner, to tell us the most horrifying graphic story ever and taint the jury and taint all the public to the point that we couldn't even understand how this case could possibly not be found guilty, how this suspect could not be found guilty. And that's where we get Kratz lying and telling stories. Because if you listen to that broadcast now, where are, as he put, quote unquote, puddles of blood that we were all told about quote unquote puddles of blood in the under the seats in the raft oh take a breath let's try to read this again sorry i didn't mean to jump in i'm just frustrated by this 
The graphic nature of Kratz disclosure served no legal purpose. While I do not deny this information may be accurate, I know from experience that it is not evidence until it is entered into trial or at trial. Our basic system holds that it should not be brought before a jury until it serves any cha um, any challenges before it is presented, and if it is presented, it must be weighed by the jurors after the defense has the opportunity to address it and impeach the witness if possible. The prosecution has unnecessarily poisoned the jury pool. In a county the size of Manitowoc, it will be extremely difficult to impanel anyone who has not heard of the case. And with the release of what your headline called horrific details, formed an opinion. If our system is to survive, that right to know must be balanced against a defendant's right to a fair trial. Make the defendant a monster before trial, and you reduce his chances for a fair trial to next to nothing. If this trial is held in Manitowoc County, the chances for appeal, if a conviction is had, are almost 100%. If a change of venue is granted, there will still remain a huge possibility that the verdict will be overturned because of pre-trial publicity. The law enforcement agencies involved in this case have done a very credible and detailed job in their investigation and should be commended. We can only hope that the information they work so hard to obtain could or can be used at trial. The prosecutor, Mr. Kress, has blundered and blundered badly. We can only hope that his actions do not result in a miscarriage of justice. Okay, I want to take that and frame that. Let's do this. Let's do something fun. Let's go grab this with a little screenshot while we're here. Actually, let's make it so that we should be able to see who wrote it. So let's redo this down. We're going to tweet together today. Let me see if I can grab that Conrad thing. All right, we got her. We're going to tweet this. And we'll do it together. So that'll take just a minute because, I mean, the prosecutor, Mr. Kress, has blundered and blundered badly. We can only hope that his actions do not result in the miscarriage of justice. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Actually, let's see. Can we copy this? No. Okay, we'll tweet this. We do it as a group. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to Twitter real quick. And we're going to click what's happening. And let's see. Can we? Uh, we can't. I would have to save it. Well, we could do it if we do this. We could save the whole article. And then we could just click it to the link. There, we got the name. We'll save that. I'll give it just a minute to save. But yeah, look at that. I mean, even at the time in 06, while the, the they're choosing jury members and all that, this is being stated. So we'll call this Kratz blundered in releasing details. And then we'll put the date. Wasn't it 306? What was it? 30906? Oh, three. Oh nine, oh six. There we go. We'll save that right there. Give it a minute. We'll get a little uploading going on. It does oh, um, upload everything I do onto Imager if anybody ever cared. <laughs> All right, we can close this down, close this. Oh, it did work. We went through all that for absolutely nothing. So um, let's see, can we grab the link? Yeah, we can add the link right to it, too. What do you guys want to call it? We're going to make this up together. I'm coming back to chat. Okay, we're going to nudge the judge. All right. Whoop. Oh, Lord. What have I done? 
Okay, you guys. Um, let's see what we want to call it. I got to scroll down, get caught up. Yeah, contaminated the public with misinformation. Absolutely. Um, Linda writes, that's what I always thought. They were putting out way too much information on the news. How are they going to get a fair trial? Amen to that, sister. Put a PDF pic. Ah, uh, yeah, I could do that too. All right, guys. Let's go back onto Twitter, and we're going to tweet as a group. And we're going to say... Oh, and we still have it tiny. Let's blow it back up or you'll never see this. We'll go up to 150%. Okay, let's grab at King Kratz, huh? Should we call him out? Okay, let's see. It didn't name him, so let's try it again. Okay, grab King Kratz. Why would you have made a graphic? Um, public news conferences prior to trial. It was, uh, oh, we should say, we should ask it a question. Was it to, now how did you word that, Tony? Let's go back and see. Tony said something on there. Hmm. Where did Tony go? Kratz. I lost that where it was. That was a really good way to put it, though. It was tainting the jury or something. All right. We'll go back and we'll try to kind of put it. Was it to... Poison. The jury. Remember they use the word jury pool. We'll quote it. The jury pool to result in a guilty verdict. Do you think this helped? Even Avery get a fair trial. Let's ask King Kratz all this. Let's see, do we have room we can still type? We'll put at Zellner at law. And let's check and see if we can still put in. Oh, we've got plenty of room, you guys. We can go at, is it Jerome Buting? Yeah, let's go there. Let's see who else. Somebody, what hashtags you guys want? You got to tell me, guys. I saw somebody say nudge the judge. Is that what we're doing? We'll put nudge the judge. Okay, let's go hashtag nudge the, oh, we were supposed to do it with caps or something. Someone said nudge. How do you do that? Nudge. <laughs> I'm having a blonde moment. Um, nudge the. Uh, and I can't type. It's like I'm typing with paddles here. It's my little little feet here. Okay. We still have room to type. Do we want to add anything else for uh Hi everybody? Hi Bron. Oh. A rubber ducky. Oh, at rubber ducky. You guys want me to add my own thing for a hashtag? Oh, I like truth wins. I'm going with truth wins. Thank you, Bron. Truth wins. Perfect. I think we're almost, oh, we might give that one more. We'll see what else we got. Nye Rider. At, okay, we'll see if we can fit Laura Nye Rider. Okay, at Laura. Okay, we'll see. We got 17. Ooh, we still have 10 left. We might give it one more. Oh, my gosh. Okay. At Rubber Ducky. I, I just feel weird adding myself. I don't think it's going to fit anyway. Rubber Ducky. I've never even seen my, my name. Where am I? I don't, I've never even used my name. Look, there's all kinds of Rubber Duckies. I'm not one. How about this? 
This is the one I've always used. Ducks. Oops, our ducks. Ha! <laughs> our ducks. Ducks in a row. Ah, we're too short. Let's see. What, what, what can we change? Why would you have made such graphic public news conferences prior to trial? Was I wonder if we put, let's see, to result. I'll take away A and a space. Ha, we got it. All right, guys. Are we ready? We're tweeting. Sent. All right. This is what it looks like. Why would you have made such graphic public news conferences prior to trial? Was it to poison the jury pool to result in guilty verdict? Do you think this helps Stephen Avery get a fair trial? And we'll have to see how he answers. Ha ha ha. Fun. So we'll go ahead and close off Twitter. And we'll come back. So, um, no, what? What's Braun saying? She says, no, 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 no. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, what was that, the right kin? I've never, uh, KZ, Syndicrats. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go back. We'll do just a few more minutes. We're going to do this about three more minutes. For those of you, oh, at Wisconsin DOJ, that would have been great, Lisa. Don't put yourself, put KZ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have. But I did have, I did have KZ. Didn't I do a Zellner at Law? Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Oh, Linda, we can help you out if you ever want to tweet. Ted Governor, ha, ha, ha. Okay, guys, um, so we have a few more minutes. I want to go back and uh, look at what we got for, we're just going to grab a couple more. I figure uh, we've been on here a long time. Um, Halbach family returns to courtroom. That would be a good one. You guys have the link. It's at the um, rubber ducky Stephen Avery files with an F dot com. And then you choose the uh, RD Avery documents and right in the front, you'll see this. There was one on here I really uh, thought was really interesting. Here, look at this one, you guys. Why has this not been addressed? Desi says, seven people can vouch for him the night of Hobbock's murder. Manitowoc, five family members, two other people, and a cell phone company are the witness alibis for the Mishkot 10 a teen accused, along with his uncle, of raping and killing Teresa Halbach, according to court documents. Brendan Desi has pleaded not guilty to being a party to murder, sexual assault, and corpse mutilation. Investigators say he gave three videotaped statements to police admitting his involvement in the alleged crimes with his uncle Steve Avery 44 but last week the judge in the case unsealed a letter Dassey wrote him recanting his confession saying he lied to investigators Dassey's attorney Lynn Kaczynski filed a notice of alibi Thursday which is required when a defense attorney intends to prove or I'm sorry intends to try to prove a client was never at the crime scene it's not a complete alibi that covers the entire evening, Kaczynski said Friday. It does cover certain periods of time where Brendan made statements to the police where he was involved with Avery in the murder of Teresa Halbach. The document lists Avery Dassey's mother, Barbara Yonda, his three brothers, Blaine, Brian, and Bobby, Yonda's boyfriend, Scott Tadich, and Blaine's boss, Michael Cornelly. Kaczynski said. It also lists a record custodian for Verizon North Incorporated. Dassey claims his brother's boss called him at 6 p.m. that night, Kaczynski says. Kaczynski said Friday that no one can vouch for Dassey's whereabouts between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. the day of the murder. Okay, I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, you guys, take some time. Uh, enjoy this. You, you got this kind of information. <laughs> oh, Lord. Wow. I don't even know if that's a real newspaper on there. That looks like a, these two both look like 
Oh yeah, they are. Fun times are called. So it's these two on the end are not real newspapers. In fact, I'll move them out of here because the rest are. So let me grab them real quick. And uh, let's move them out so that we only have actual newspaper clippings in there. And I'm going to throw them. Hey, researchers, I'm pulling out two just for you know. I'm throwing them in BBs. Okay, guys, there we go. So another Avery accuser awaits. There's information on the different levels of how much money was being sued for. So at one point, we were um, Avery was only suing for $1.1 million. Um, and it justifies the information out. So let's do a little recap here. We'll go back to chat. We'll close this off, close out the library for now. Um, let's do a real quick recap before we close it off here. I'm going to pause for just a minute to get a drink before we do that. We're going to be going to Discord for those of you that enjoy the live chats on there. Um, I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab a drink. All right, guys. Um, personally, I want to, to leave with a very good message here. I appreciate, and uh, so do the researchers here, um, we're all just, we're armchair sleuths. And um, we call each other researchers because we do spend a gross amount of time trying to solve this murder and this case to get the guys out. But we're no different than you guys are going through Googles, going through information, trying to... Um, find more information to help Zellner. We do have a running joke in our little group. Um, we say our favorite pastime is scrolling. <laughs> so, but you know, the recap here is that we want to thank all 3,000 plus 30 um, subscribers that are spreading the word. We appreciate that you are constantly making public awareness. I don't care whose videos it is. Um, all YouTubers need to be on one united front as truthers. Um, we need to be staying focused on the case, doing things such as creating libraries um, and projects that bring us closer together and support each other because it's about a positive attitude. And that's that's where Zellner needs us most, is she needs us to stay on this case and provide public awareness. So um, as we stated, another recap thing is we've taken the criticism to be very constructive. We always like to hear how we can improve ourselves. And with that, the one way we're going to be able to do that coming up is as we make rubber ducky videos, what we're going to do is we're going to be saving the PowerPoint in a PDF form. And this will be um, available to you through clicking in the description of the video that will take you into a clickable links. And so when we say we're reading a document, say we're reading a CASO document, or some people say CASO, CASO, whichever you prefer, tomato, tomato, um, you'll be able to actually click on a link to go read it yourself so that you realize if you're not able to maybe have the skills to find things yourself, that's not a big deal. You're still a very, very valuable asset to the case in sharing public awareness. Um, it's all waters, you know, it's all what we focus on is going to grow. So if we focus on picking apart other people that are on the same team, well, that's just silly. That's a waste of time. So what we need to focus on is the information at hand. And like just a short time, I only opened, what was it, three or four news documents from that time frame. Look what we've already learned. They were screaming and saying, hey, you're tainting the jury pool. The people that are going to be pulled out and used and, and in the jury, you're tainting them with all this public awareness. And it's it's not ethical. It's not right. It's not going to promote a fair trial. So not only did the trial itself not go right, pre-trial, was, it was as, uh, for lack of better words, it was, it was like somebody put a roadblock up and said, nope, you can't have a fair trial before it even gets going. Um, and who was that? Who was the speaker at these? Well, Ken Kratz. Before he gets in front of the jury trial, he's already, you know, he's already divulging all the information about this murder and everything before the defense has had a chance to open up and put their stuff on the, the line that says, let me explain some of this. 
And he's exaggerating in these news broadcasts, saying there's puddles of blood beneath the seat in the RAV. I challenge you guys. Is there somebody here that can prove that to me that that wasn't a complete lie? We, Yeah, Scott Farish just said we all live, we live on Avery Road. We do. We all have the opportunity that if some law official decided in our life to railroad us this way, what would stop them? What stopped the what stopped the press from rolling the falsified publications that po that poisoned the jury pool? Nothing. It ran rapid. So what we're doing every day is bringing the public awareness. Um, and I want to say thank you for all of the subscribers. Um, it's about public awareness, and that means that we're getting more and more people aware. I ask you guys, share links, whether it's my videos, other people's videos, doesn't matter. Share, share, share. Get the word out there if you can. We do ask that you do share the library. This is where people that are new to the case can kind of get their feet wet without getting too overwhelmed. Um, and they can look around and read themselves what information is available. The library is growing bigger and bigger every day. Um, we are having a huge, huge, big project coming out called Remaking a Murderer. It's going to be series one, two, and three um, of the MAM version. So we are remaking that. It's going to be an updated version with Zellner's tweets with all the information. So I want to thank you all very much for joining us. I'm about to get off here from the bottom of my heart. I thank each and every one of you. I try to answer all your comments or at least acknowledge what you're saying and read. Um, there are days, especially weekends when I work, I'm not available. So I do have a little bit slower reply, but I eventually get to talk to each of you. Thank you so much, everybody. If you want to continue to join, we do have a group, open group chat. You can either just text or you can grab voice or you can do both. And that's on the um, Discord channel. So I hope to see you there. Thank you again. And it's time to say our line, guys. If you didn't do the crime, you shouldn't set the time. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Love you all. Much love. Now I got to remember how to get off here. <laughs> all right. Take care, guys. Thank you so much.